we have already discussed the deformation caused by the internal normal force characterized by delta the displacement. We also learned the deformation caused by the internal torsional moment characterized by phi angle of twist. But what about the deformation caused by the internal shear force and internal bending moment? For example, for this beam structure subjected to the external loadings, we have already learned how to determine its internal shear force diagram as well as its internal bending moment diagram. But how do we quantify the deformation of this beam? From experience, we know that this beam is probably going to deform this way. And this curve is known as the elastic curve, and it characterizes the deformation of this beam caused by the internal shear force and bending moment. And in this video, we will learn how to determine the elastic curve. And since our discussion is based on the simplified theory of elasticity, we will limit our discussions with the following conditions, that the beam has elastic behavior, and the actual loading is insignificant when compared to the internal shear force and bending moment, and also the deformation is relatively small. First, we need to define deflection V, which is the vertical displacement of the centroid of each beam cross-section with respect to its original location. Since deflection V varies with location, we can plot the deflection as a function of location X, and the graph of the deflection function is the elastic curve. This graphing should remind you of the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram that we learned to construct before. Now the question is, how is the elastic curve related to the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram? From calculus, we learned that for a given function, at any point on its graph, we can determine the radius of curvature from this equation. In this equation, rho, the radius of curvature, could be positive or negative. It is positive when the curve is concave upwards, and negative when the curve is concave downwards. And if you recall, when we were deriving the factor formula, we came across this relation that epsilon maximum, the maximum normal strain caused by the bending moment, equals to c over rho. c is the maximum perpendicular distance from the neutral axis to the edge of this member, and rho is the radius of curvature at that location. And this piece right here is a small piece of the elastic curve. So we have the Fletcher formula that relates the normal stress sigma to the bending moment m. And because of the elastic behavior, Hooke's law applies. E here is Young's modulus. And from the previous slide, we have this relation between the normal strain and rho, the radius of curvature. Therefore, from here, we can derive that 1 over rho equals to m, the bending moment, over ei. Once again, E is Young's modulus and I is the area moment of inertia of the cross section. But from calculus, 1 over rho also equals to this, with V being the deflection, which is a function of x. And since I mentioned that the deformation is small, therefore this term is small. And when it's squared, it's significantly smaller when compared to 1. Therefore, from the denominator, we can eliminate this term. After this simplification, we can derive that the bending moment as a function of x equals to ei times the second derivative of the deflection function. And if you recall, the shear force function is the derivative of the bending moment function. Therefore, the shear force function equals to ei times the third derivative of the deflection function. Once again, if you remember, Wx, which is the load intensity function, is the derivative of the shear force function. Therefore, the load intensity function equals to Ei times the fourth derivative of the deflection function. And this is normally known as the Euler-Bernoulli equation. 
Let's look at this very simple example. For this cantilever beam with constant EI, it is subjected to the distributed load with the load intensity constant W. We need to determine its elastic curve. Just like what we've done so many times already, we start with a free body diagram. We determine the vertical support reaction at the fixed support to be WL and the support moment is negative WL squared over 2 and then we set up the x-axis and use the method of section to determine the shear force function as a function of x as well as the internal bending moment also as a function of x. But we just learned that this bending moment function is EI times the second derivative of the deflection function Vx. Therefore, EI times the first derivative of the deflection function equals to the integration of the bending moment function with respect to x. And the bending moment function is a polynomial function, so it's not that hard to integrate. Don't forget, you have to add this constant term. And then we integrate this function again and get EI times Vx, the deflection function. Again, you need to add this constant term. This is what we've got so far, but you might ask, what are the two constants C1 and C2? To evaluate those, we need to apply the boundary conditions. Here at point A, we have a fixed support, which means that at this location, the member is not allowed to translate vertically or rotate. No translation indicates that deflection at this point when x equals to 0 is also 0. Therefore, from here, we can solve for C2 to be 0. No rotation means that the slope of the elastic curve at this point must be 0. Therefore, EI times dVx dx must be 0. And from here, we can solve for C1 to be 0. Therefore, our final elastic curve is given by this function. And if we know the parameters, for example, W, the load intensity, is 5 kN per meter. The total length, L, is 4 meter. The Young's modulus, 200 gigapascal. And the area moment of inertia of the cross-section, 50 times 10 to the negative 6 power, in the unit of meter to the fourth power. We can substitute these parameters in the equation and determine the deflection function, which is in the unit of meter. With the deflection function, we can plot the elastic curve, which characterizes the deformation of this beam. As you can see, the largest deflection occurs at the edge of this beam, which is about 0.01 meter, that is 10 centimeter. Let's quickly look at another example. For this overhanging beam with the shown loadings and the cross-section, as well as the given Young's modulus, we need to determine its elastic curve. Since the load situation changes along this beam, at this point you should already be able to tell that the deflection function is going to be a piecewise function. We have worked on similar problems before, and we have determined its internal shear force function which is a piecewise function, as well as its internal bending moment function, also a piecewise function. Also, we have determined that its area moment of inertia about its centroidal axis is 1.3 inch to the fourth power. Again, this is the internal bending moment function, which equals to EI times the second derivative of the deflection function. And if we integrate the bending moment function once and get this, don't forget to add the three constants. And then if we integrate this again, we get EI times Vx, the deflection function. Once again, we need to add these constants. So as you can see, the deflection function is a piecewise function. There are three pieces. And the three equations apply to these three regions respectively. Now we need to evaluate the six constants C1 through C6. 
To do that, it helps for us to sketch an elastic curve based on our own experience. As you can see, because point A and point B are supported, therefore the deflection at point A or at point B should both be zero. Therefore, the boundary conditions apply that at x equals to zero, which is at point A, the deflection V evaluated by equation one should also be zero. From here, we can get C4 equals to zero. At point B, which is when x equals to eight feet, the deflection V evaluated by equation three is zero. We substitute that in and we get this equation. But that's only two equations and we have six unknowns. Therefore, we need to also apply the continuity condition. If we look at this point, which is the point when the two regions meet each other, the deflection at this point must be the same no matter if we use equation one or equation two to evaluate it. Therefore, at x equals to four, the deflection evaluated by equation one and the two are the same. From here, we get this equation. Same thing with this point. Again, because the curve is continuous, therefore at this point, the deflection evaluated by equation two or three must be the same. And then we get another equation. Also because of the continuity, at the points when the two regions meet, the slope of the curve should also be the same. So the slope at x equals to four feet evaluated by equation one and two should be the same. We get this equation and also the slope evaluated at x equals to six feet from equation two or three should be the same. And we get this equation. So now we have six equations and six unknowns. We simplified these six equations. They are all linear equations. They're not that hard to solve and we can solve for all of them and get this right here, which is still not our final result. If you have been keeping track, what we've got here, EI times V has the unit of pound times cubic foot. Therefore, let's first do unit conversion and then divided by EI, this is the Young's modulus and this is I, the area moment of inertia. And with that done, we finally get our final answer. This is the deflection function, and its graph is the elastic curve. And the deflection calculated from this function has the unit of inch. With this function, we can evaluate the deflection at any location on this beam. For example, if we are interested to know what is the deflection at when x equals to two feet, we need to evaluate that using the first equation in this piecewise function. Substitute in x equals to two, and we get negative 0.127 inch. Negative sign indicates that it is below the original location. And of course, we can also graph the deflection function and get the elastic curve. This way, it provides a visualization of the deformation of this beam. From the graph, as you can see, the maximum deflection occurs at approximately four feet, and the deflection is about almost 0.18 inch.